Hey, uh, difficult day, obviously for you know the players and the coaches and uh, the NFL and our fans and anybody that's you know even knows the NFL. You know, so obviously we want to you know on behalf of the Titans organization, our, our players and everybody involved, uh, send our deepest sympathies and our concerns and our prayers uh, to uh, Demar, who you know by all accounts is is fighting his tail off in Cincinnati. Um, you know, to his family who, who watched that unfold, you know, in front of their eyes. Uh, you know, to DeMar's football family in Buffalo and, uh, and Pittsburgh, you know, those teammates. And, you know, we have one of those guys, Rashad Weaver, was a teammate of his. So, you know, doing everything we can just to continue to support him uh, and sending out, uh, you know, obviously our um, thoughts to, to everybody involved. and. You know, just commend Zach and, and Sean for their leadership uh, that they showed last night, for the example that they showed. Uh, really in awe of, of the players on both sides, Buffalo and Cincinnati. Uh, the way that they supported each other was, was amazing to see. Um, you know, and it just, you know, we all watch these games differently. You know, fans watch them at home or a bar or, you know, coaches in this league watch them, you know, as they're working in the, in the games on in the background. So. You know, we were all affected, you know, differently, but, uh, you know, we just send our condolences and, and really just the respect that we have for everybody involved and, and wish nothing but the best for DeMar. Mike, with that, uh, has there been any discussions about whether or not to play this weekend, considering we, he's still in critical condition? Um, I, no, no, no discussions. Um, that would be a, a league thing. You know, we're, we're doing our best to prepare. Um, for, for the uh, amazing opportunity that we have uh, and for our football team. You mentioned the, the, the human element uh, as coaches. I'm presuming maybe in the building last night. Uh, did it, did you, it, was it a moment that you turn, you watch? Uh, how struck were you by that? I mean, you've been a player. You've seen players taken off, teammates taken off. Uh, how difficult was it maybe to see that start happening? And, and did you, could you, was it must-see TV at that moment? Well, I think the one thing that, that resonates now is, you know, when you're a parent um, and, and your kids play sports, um, with all respect to the other players, you don't really watch them. You don't watch the game. Um, you stare at your, your son or your daughter, you know, who's, who's an offensive lineman or a third baseman, and you don't know if it was a ball or a strike, and you don't know if it was a run play or a pass play. You just kind of kind of watch your son or, or, or daughter. And that's kind of how you watch sports as a, as a parent. So I guess that's what I thought is, is you know, that he has a grand, grandparents or parents, <clears throat> you know, that, that watch that. And, you know, they didn't know how T. Higgins got the ball. They just saw him make a tackle. They watched him, you know, progress through the play. So I guess that's where, where I went. And then, you know, just watched everything unfold with the coaching staffs and, you know, the players, uh, how they supported each other. What's been the mood around around the team this morning? I, you know, we we shared um, you know some some great conversations. Um, you know, had an opportunity to you know you know discuss this how everybody's feeling. I think guys are you know they understand you, you know the the um, the severity you know of this. They understand the the game. And, and, and what we love, um, you know, and sometimes things that you love the most and that can give you the most can also take the most away. Um, but, you know, there were some really, really cool comments um, that our players shared with each other and with me and, and everybody else. So uh, I, I think that they are, are doing their best to support former teammates who are in Buffalo, um, but also understand that you know, we, we, have a, we have a great opportunity um, to continue to do what we um, love to do. And, and one of our leaders said, you know, and this is someone that knew DeMar, or knows DeMar, is that they're grateful. Uh, they're, they're reminded that they're grateful that they get to do this. And I thought that that was really uh, special um, to hear some of those guys talk. Mike, do you think the conversation will be ongoing within your locker room and with your team this week as you move forward? Or is this one of those things where you kind of have to put it to bed this morning and try to focus the best you can on your job? Well, I don't think that those discussions ever really stop. I mean, I think we all, you know, have to at least appreciate, 
you know, what we do, uh, where, where we do it and who we get to do it, you know, with, uh, you know, and just understand the, you know, the things that go along with, with playing football and being a teammate and everything else. And so you know, that, those conversations with injuries may come up or, you know, in this case, something, you know, much, much worse. Um, so I don't, I don't want it to like necessarily have to go anywhere. I want it to be, you know, part of, you know, the conversation, if that's where the players feel like, you know, they want it to go or, you know, how, how we all deal with things and we're going to feel each person is going to feel, you know, maybe a little differently. Shifting gears, Mike, mm -hmm. um, for Josh uh, to, to take over a huddle in such short order, the leadership qualities that come and, and some of the things you tend to rely on with the quarterback developing over time, how difficult is it to, to ask a guy and, to, and what can you expect out of a guy in, in short order as compared to what you, what you get out of a guy that puts a whole off season into it? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, quarterbacks have been quarterbacks since they probably grabbed a football. Then they six years old and they started throwing a football, and um, you know, they kind of have characteristics and qualities, and you know, half the battle is acting like one. You know, is acting like a quarterback, and uh, I think Josh is is going to be very well prepared and you know, understand that we'll have to go in on a, on a you know great environment on on Saturday night, uh, and, and we'll start that preparation today, but. He understands that, and he's played quarterback, and he's played in front of big, big crowds, and he's played in big games. How is he been just as far as adjusting to that role as a leader here, you know, in this locker room so quickly? Well, I think probably, you know, from the get-go, I think he was probably just trying to focus on knowing what to do and the terminology, and then, you know, I, th I think we went to the Cowboys game, and there's some guys he probably didn't even know, know their first name. Um, I think that's that'll probably change by the time Saturday comes. About getting some of your guys back, how much yeah. juice does it give you knowing you got a game plan now that includes Simmons, Autry, Fulton, Hooker, and the rest that you're getting back? Henry. Henry, it's a big one. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that that's just something that everybody felt after the game. You know, I think that that our players felt it. You know, I felt like they, you know, they they played uh, extremely hard. They prepared extremely hard. You know, just. Came up a little short, uh, obviously, the other night. And you know, guys were back. I think they were energized. And, and, and this, you know, it's such a, a difficult thing, you know, when you want to try to send a message of, you know, we talked yesterday about being excited and embracing the opportunity. And then life happens, you know, last night. And, um, but we still, I think we still need to get there and we still will be there. And I think we'll, you know, Go out and, and, and start our preparation today on, on the field. The idea of playing mistake free or close to it. I don't, I'm, you want guys to be cleaner, but how much do you need them not to like go over, overthink that? Yeah, we don't want to sit there and, and, and paralyze ourselves with being perfect. You know, I think we have to try to be pre precise and, and not worry about being perfect. Nobody's going to be perfect out there on the football field. There's a lot of things that. Um, you know, keep you a bit, you know, from ever being perfect. We don't, we don't want that. We want them to understand the concept of the play, the details that are associated with it, you know, and the technique and fundamentals to, to do their job and, you know, communicate with urgency. And, you know, a lot of those things you can make up, you make up for mistakes with, you know, some other things with, with effort and finish and communication, you know, and, and playing, you know, as a team and letting somebody else, you know, help you if you make a mistake, the guy next to you hopefully can, can fix it. Do you have to have a different plan for Ingram, or do guys just have to execute better against him? Well, I mean, we probably need to be tighter on him and, and be able to, you know, keep our leverage, um, tackle, um, you know. But, he, you know, I mean, they're not, it's not like they're going to not target him. You know, he's, he's had 36 targets in the last four games. You know, had the one two days ago, so. You know, he, he was, you know, been a really good productive player here down the stretch for him. How big would it be to, you know, go out there and score on that first drive on offense, something that you guys did a lot earlier this, this season. Like, how much would that kind of, like, just shake off this, this funk, you know, that the offense has had over the six-game streak? Well, I don't think that anything that we've done prior to this is going to really matter. Um, 
on, in all three phases. The only thing that's going to matter is um, what we do on, on Saturday night. And if we score, great. We're going to need to go down and score again. I think we'll need more than seven to win. Uh, and if we don't score, we'll have to you know, come off and, and make some adjustments and, and, and keep swinging. And so you know, it would be great to score you know, the first possession of the game. You know, but it would also be great to you know, stay really consistent and, and take advantage of the opportunities and, and play complimentary football and take care of the football. No activation for long this week, Mike? Uh, not as of today, no. You didn't have Autry the first time you guys played the Jags. Coincidentally, not so coincidentally, you didn't have any sacks on on Trevor. How much can he help the pass rush? And well, yeah, I mean, the sacks are one thing. You should, you know, we would have to focus on how we can disrupt the quarterback. Yeah, to, you know, the, our ability to, to disrupt them and affect them, um, that wasn't good either. You know, not only were the sacks, you know, weren't there, but, um, you know, so we'll have to try to, you know, find different ways and, and, and make sure that, you know, he doesn't have 120 rating and, um, you know, because that would be that'd be tough to, to overcome. Is there anybody other than Long who could be in line for that last activation line? I think we addressed this the other day. I don't think that there is. Um, no, I don't think at this time. How's the patched up offensive line done over the last couple of games? Have you seen improvements? Well, I mean, there were some good things. There were some times where, you know, on Thursday, Josh had some time to, to pro progress through. Uh, and then other times where, you know, needs to be better. And, and again, that's, you know, it's going to be another good front this week. It's all about the Jacksonville Jaguars and how we, you know, can block, you know, Allen and, and Key, um, Walker, you know, Harris inside and, and everything that they do and, and Hamilton, uh, the pressures they bring, the safety pressures or, you know, blitz and a backer. So that that's what it's going to be about. And, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to you know, start that preparation here today. Does having a six-year guy like, like Dobbs as the quarterback, does that allow you to kind of open things up a little bit more, call the game differently as opposed to a rookie like Malik? Um, I mean, I think you go in with a game plan and you see kind of how, you know, how it's working and, and what he feels comfortable with um, against uh, some of the stuff that they're doing. You know, I don't know if that's – the game plan is going to be the same for, for both quarterbacks. Do you feel with the way that he's able to progress through, like does that keep the offense on schedule a little bit more? Running good plays and executing good plays keeps us on schedule, not having um, unforced errors, you know, penalties that, that I think are avoidable. You know, some penalties are what they are, you know, but some of them are avoidable. Uh, that, that's what helps stay on schedule. And, you know, Starts with the substitution, starts with the operation, the cadence, all those things that we're going to have to be great with on the road. What kind of things did you uh, hear or information did you get about Dobbs before he came in and what have you learned about him in this time here? Uh, I think he's, you know, I mean, he's got a calming presence. You know, I mean, I think he's, you know, he's got a nice, confident calmness to him. Seemed like he came over on the sidelines, communicated well with the players, communicated well with with Todd and Pat and Malik, um, you know, about what he saw. You know, I saw him communicate with the receivers afterwards, and you know, he's an intelligent player. Um, it's been really, you know, it's been nice having him around and, and working with him and getting to know him. I've really always admired him from afar, um, you know, his career and you know what he's done. Anticipate this feeling like a road playoff game? Yes. Yeah, this would be, you know, a road. I mean, I think this is a playoff. It's certainly a playoff game for us. Um, you know, so that's how we'll, we'll treat it and, you know, make sure that we're doing all those things that, you know, that give you a chance to win and make sure that we're, we're working all the cadences and, and working the silent and the crowd noise and substitution, all those things that are going to be critical. You know, for us on offense and special teams.